Welcome to another episode of Mental Health and Makeup Monday. And today is gonna be a special one because it's Mental Health and Makeup Monday story time. And I'm gonna tell you a little story about living with undiagnosed ADHD. Well, your girl is looking rough today. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can't make some magic happen. So those of you who are returning, hi, how are you? And if you're new and just stopping by, hi. My name is Kish Martin and I'm a licensed therapist. And here's where I try to help you laugh through the crap that's holding me back, all right? So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, then stick around. Man, my glasses are dirty. All right, story time. Undiagnosed ADHD. Yeah, that was me. I didn't get official diagnosis until I was in my 30s. And up until then, I was tired all the time, mm. dragging ass. It took so much energy to concentrate and to follow through with tasks. And I felt pretty odd and awkward. I still kind of do. <coughs> anyway, so when I was younger, as a child, I was very, very smart. I know, I don't know what happened. Reading came very natural to me. I was able to read and write very early on, but math was a problem. All the steps, all the things, wasn't natural for me. I didn't understand it. And then word problems. Oh my God, that was a nightmare. If you or someone you know are recognizing the following signs, then you know what I'm gonna say. So as I got older, I'm moving from adolescence to late teens. Oh man, it just got progressively worse. So it would take me two to three times the amount of time that it would take someone else without ADHD to get things done. I would sit down to do my homework and to do my reading, and oftentimes I'd fall asleep. I'd fall asleep. So as I became an adult, which is still under debate if I'm actually one, a kid, I am very mature. <laughs> I just like to laugh and make other people laugh. Have I made you laugh yet? Be honest. I think I'm pretty funny. Let me know if you think I'm funny. Anyway, where was I? Yes, adulthood. It was expected of me to go to college, which I did. Thanks, mom. I hope I made you proud. But when I got to college, I was very, very confused. Everything interested me and nothing interested me at the same time. Yeah, so I changed my major several times, but landed on teaching. So when I was a teacher, I taught first grade. It was exhausting. It was so tiring already to like someone that doesn't have ADHD. And then you add that on top of me and I came home destroyed. Which brings me to my next point. I know I actually have a point, this is weird. So when you have ADHD and you're undiagnosed, Typically, you do demonstrate a lot of exhaustion, kind of like you're in a meditative state, say to, I believe, while you're awake, which makes it very difficult to concentrate. And so it requires a lot more energy to focus and to stay awake, which is sometimes why people are fidgety and all the things. But I managed for about four years until I was just not managing well anymore. My mirror is over here in case you're wondering why I'm looking, not looking at the camera. Sorry, not a makeup artist, okay? Where was I? Oh, I went back to school to get my master's in counseling. And that took me a minute. I believe it was my second year in my program that I was diagnosed. So if you're undiagnosed, oftentimes you can struggle with severe anxiety and depression. And a lot of the reasons why that could be true is because you don't fit. You're constantly comparing yourself to others. People are comparing you to others. They're like, what's wrong with you? Why are you lazy? Snap out of it. If you just applied yourself, you're smarter than this. All the things, all right, not cool. So for a long time, I just thought I had anxiety and depression, which was true to a degree, but there was a reason. Aside from personal things, maybe I'll tell you that story in another Mental Health Makeup Monday, but for now, I'm just gonna focus, I think, on what it was like being undiagnosed. Although it wasn't until my master's program that I was officially diagnosed, one of my colleagues when I was teaching, and she gave me a book to read, and this is not a joke, but it was called Driven to Distraction, and I never finished. But from what I did read, I was like, yeah, I could kind of see it, but I wasn't sold. I was just convinced that it was just anxiety. So. Okay, so when I finally received the right diagnosis, things got better, things improved, my day to day, all the things. My relationships also improved. Mm hmm they sure did. Well, I mean, for the most part, aside from some other things, but you know, now's not the time. I'll get to that maybe in another one if, if you're curious. 
man, the whole world opened for me. It was just like, ah, this is what was wrong. Yeah, in my mind, it was that dramatic. I'm not real sure how I'm feeling about this eye makeup. I always do this. I always want to do green and then I'm doing it and like halfway through, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? All right, let me tell you about the hyperfocus. Hyperfocus is very much a thing in ADHD. All right, a lot of people think it's like, oh look, squirrel, which is definitely the case in a lot of the situations. But we also have a tendency to hyperfocus once we're engaged, all right? I can tell you from my experience, that is definitely the case. You know, I feel like I have to get things done when I start it because I'm afraid that if I don't finish it, it won't get finished. Something I've noticed in myself and other people is that we're typically pretty passionate about a thing. And sometimes it can jump around between things or we'll hyper-focus on one thing for a while and then it'll shift to something else and we'll do the same there. And then sometimes nothing gets done as a result. And then what can happen is that you beat yourself up and like, oh, here I go again, not finishing another thing. What's wrong with me? All the things, all right? So if that sounds like something's going on with you, you know what I'm gonna say. Also, for people with ADHD, it's difficult to regulate your emotions at times. Um, you can be hypersensitive to criticism because you're already really hard on yourself as it is. And a large reason for that is because that's something that people with ADHD often have experienced is constantly being criticized, nagged, chastised, if you will. And this can certainly lead to some toxic behavior if you're not aware of it, all right? So that's why it's important to get the appropriate diagnosis and get treated and all things so you can have better relationships and function better with your day-to-day -day tasks. So, something about. So, from what I've seen in my practice and with myself, oftentimes we're very creative people, artsy people, not always, most of us I think are, and we have some really cool ideas but it's just seeing it through that's the issue. So if you notice this, then someone you care about, help them out, man, all right? Help them put the pieces together. Encourage them. We need it. We need to believe in ourselves because if we don't, then we're more likely not to follow through with something, even if it's a brilliant idea, all right? Oh, uh, which brings me to this thing that happened to me the other day. I had something going on with my ear and then I couldn't go back to sleep and then my brain just like took off. Like it was just on this sprint. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get this done. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna forget it if I try to go back to sleep. But I tried to go back to sleep and I did go back to sleep. And then what happened was, is when I woke up, it was gone. But then it came back right in the middle of when I was doing something else. Fantastic. I gotta say, having ADHD does certainly make life interesting. I can laugh at myself. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself, guys, okay? Just take a minute. Think about something that you screwed up or frustrated about that you did or you regret. Find a reason to laugh at it, all right? It does wonders for the healing process. Oh, here's something that might help explain some of my videos. I don't usually script them. I might bullet point them just so I remember to cover certain topics, but it's a problem when I'm editing. And so if you notice a lot of, you know, movement and cutting, it's because I have to cut out the parts where I'm like pausing for a lengthy time because I forgot what I was gonna say. But the reason why I do this though is also because when I script it, I lose track and I lose focus and I put too much pressure on myself to to get everything in and then it doesn't get done. So I do hope that you enjoy this content. And if you do, then let me know down below. Oh yeah, over explaining is also a thing in case you didn't catch that. I think sometimes people have this idea in their head when they go to a therapist that they have it all together and they have life all figured out, but we still have our struggles, okay? We're still human and we make mistakes and we're not at all by any means perfect which is why I always say that your therapist needs to see a therapist, okay? Speaking of therapy, have you gone? Are you going? Do you wanna go? Have you gone and you hated it? If so, let me know, okay? I wanna hear from you, gotta talk to each other. Also, join us on Discord. Also something you should know, people with ADHD can often thrive in the right environments. 
if they have the right interventions and the treatment and all the things. I don't know if I moved this when the doorbell rang, but whatever. Also, I'm kind of glad that I was undiagnosed because it prompted me to really finish school. It also helped me find motivation to become self-employed from my own business because I was not about to try to be under someone else's rules because I had a hard time like, you know, with all the things. And so being self-employed has been amazing. I love it. love it. I love my job. I love my clients. I love helping people. And I love that I can have my own schedule and do my own thing and have time to do other projects that mean a lot to me and trying to find unique ways to help people out there that struggle with mental illness, relationship problems, all the things which I otherwise wouldn't be able to do if I was working a nine to five, which would be awful. I'm so sorry if you are one of those people and you're miserable, but you can do it too. All right, you can get out. And if you need some help with that, you know what I'm gonna say. Before I finish up, I wanna give a shout out to everybody on the Discord server. So glad to have you on board. So glad to see you guys being able to support one another. And it's just pretty awesome to be growing this community with you. So thanks for being a part of it. You guys kick ass. Are there any makeup artists out there that wanna like give me a lesson or like come to Spain and, and, and do my makeup or just like tutor me? <laughs> I watch all of those videos. I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm having fun. Are you having fun? I hope you're having fun. Somebody's at the door. I gotta go. I'll be right back. By the time I get back, I'm gonna have it all done because I'm gonna have to, you know, all the things right then. Cool. Don't go anywhere. Stay put, stay put. 12 hours later. All right, so I'm freshening up my makeup now because I had an unexpected interruption. Well, actually, I knew it was happening, but I forgot it was happening. So it took me a while to get back to finishing this part of video. So, sorry, but this is kind of a finished face. Right then, I manage. What's going on with this light? Why is it changing? What is happening? What is happening? I need a crew. Who wants to be my crew? Come to Spain. I'll pay you in paella. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you liked it, then make sure that you comment down below, share your thoughts, and make sure you subscribe and all the things. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be love.